10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey everybody, Kitty McGowan, president of the U.S. Super Yacht Association, here at, guess what, an event, not just an event, the event, the 61st annual Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show here in Fort Lauderdale at the Bahia Mar Resort. This uh, spectacular three days of the show, and for so many of you that aren't able to join us, we thought that we'd give you an opportunity to get a taste of what it's like to do an event, because it's been a crazy year. It feels a little bit like we're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. So we're gonna take some time and give you a quick snapshot around the show and let you get a feel for this year's show. Now, granted, it's different. I'm saving a fortune on lipstick this year because of the mask, but it's a great show. Everybody's being very, very careful and respectful and socially distant. And I think it's a great opportunity to get us back working and get things going. This community has been so supportive of the show the county, the city, they've all worked together and the industry have come together to make sure that we could get back to work and keep our industry vibrant. Hats off to Marine Industries Association of South Florida and Informa for sticking it out and making this happen. So I'm excited to be able to show you through the magic of television, the entire show in a blink of an eye. So I'm gonna channel my inner Dorothy and I'm going to click my ruby slippers together and we'll take you to the next spot. How's that? Join me now. Okay, here we go. Okay, everybody, we've down to the face dock here at Bahia Mar. Now, I know it doesn't look the same as it has in previous years, but that's actually by design. We've limited the number of people. We've enlarged the width of the docks, all to ensure your safety and security through these crazy times. You can still see that there are plenty of big boats behind us. There's lots of, of, of space in between. There's places to have a cocktail. We even have a nice lounge here with even upgraded food and it's all good times. So it, it is a different show, but this way you can see that there's still lots to see and lots to do. And more than anything, it's all about the people that are here. It's all about seeing our friends and colleagues that we've missed throughout the year. And now we're going to our next stop. Let's go, Dorothy. Okay, Dorothy's gone to a new spot here. We have the fabulous water taxi still on the job. And thanks so much to Bill Walker and the water taxi team that are making it very, very easy to come and go from the show. And what better way to come to a boat show than on a boat? Tons of places to go. And you, when you leave the show, you can go someplace else and go have a great time. It's all about the community and this community has been very supportive and we thank them so much for everything that they do for the show and for the community and for the industry. So we're off to our next location. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. We're continuing our, go our walk around the show. And like, hey, wait, look who I see. One of our fellow partner okay. organizations, Paul Flannery. From, yes, Thank exactly. Executive director of the International Yacht Brokers Association. How are you? Um, good, thanks. We're going to give the people that are coming that to our annual meeting later an opportunity. I'm on my way up. I hope so. I know you're registered. Yeah. Yes, but why don't you give our people a, a, a couple of seconds about how you find the show? Well, Left. you know, we'd like to see we'd like to see more, but we're living in a world where we can't. And I think the industry's done a really good job of rallying and doing what they can do to put on a show. It's important for the community. It's important for the industry. And I think we've got a better turnout than a lot of people were expecting. You know, we, we'd like to have more boats, but that's the way it is. We've got what we've got. We've got a really good crowd here today, it seems like. Um, a friend of mine sent me a note this morning when we were opening up, and it was a half mile line trying to get into the place. That's great. So there's a good there's a good bunch of activity from the public, and I think everybody's craving this. Yes. We all want to get back together. It's time. It's time. We got to get back to business. Let's do it. And we're so happy to be able to be at an event because gosh knows no I've been missing all my friends from all over the world. So no you thank know? you so much, Paul. I'll pleasure. see you it's upstairs. You. I gotta get to all work. right, get to work, and see I'll you. see you upstairs. Bye. Thanks. Okay, we're off to our next location. Let's go, Dorothy. Okay, like magic, here we are. But I wanted to show everybody some of the great signage that they've 
set up here at the show so that you can find your way around very easily, especially this year because it is a different layout that many of us are just not used to. But before we head off to our next stop, I think I want to take a quick moment and do a quick stop at the hand sanitizer just to be extra safe. Okay. All right, so off we go to our next stop. Okay, Dorothy is taking her trip around the show, and here we are with one of our loyal members, HMY Yachts and Viking Yachts. And then we're off to our next stop. Okay, Dorothy now has come to the hub spot in the entire show, the Windward Club, the ultimate VIP experience for our high-end guests and visitors. Unfortunately, because I'm getting ready to go to our annual meeting, I don't have time, but you can bet I'll be back here for cocktails later. Okay, next stop. Okay, now here we are in the cafe, formerly known as the food court. Now you can see it's a vastly different experience than we've had in years past. Not only that, your ordering and the way you get your food has changed dramatically. Why don't you follow me to one of the tables in the bar area and I'll show you exactly how this works. As you can see, the tables are spread out six feet apart. You come to one of your tables and there's a code here that you scan with your phone. You get to order from one of the many vendors that are here and they deliver it right to you. Kind of different, but very exciting. So here we are and we're off to our next one because we don't have time for food today. We're going to lunch soon. So Dorothy, take me away. Now here we are standing outside the Super Yacht Pavilion, formerly home to the U.S. Super Yacht Association and our pavilion. But let's go take a look and see who's inside this year. Hi, we have Julie Berry, one of our members as well. Christine, one of our members. They're very supportive of the industry. Truly doesn't look the same, and clearly Dorothy and I, we're not in Kansas anymore. Okay, we're here inside the Super Yacht Pavilion and look who I ran into. Some of our former exhibitors from the American Pavilion. Jerry from Nova Mar, you guys, how's it going for you? It's going very well. We're really happy to be here and we're happy to see the show uh, being uh, put on and, and an event going on. But don't you miss being with us? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> and we'll be back. Awesome, <laughs> that'll look forward to it. Well, I hope you have a great rest of the show. Thank you. And we'll see you at the annual meeting later. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Great, Thank thanks you. guys. Thank All right, you. now we're off to our next stop. Okay, we're leaving the face dock and we've seen a lot of good stuff. The excitement is growing for our annual meeting that's going to start in just a few minutes. I can't wait to join you all up at the Bahia Mar. And so we're going to do the magic of the ruby slippers and head your way. Oh, it's been a fun morning and I can't wait because we're headed now into the Bahia Mar for the U.S. Super Yacht Association annual meeting. It's gonna be a lot of information from people from all over the world giving you updates and insights as to how this crazy world has happened. And it doesn't feel like that we're in Kansas anymore. And I know that we followed the yellow brick road through the show just to give you a taste, but we got lots more planned for you. And I'm sorry, I see the stairs here and this girl in these ruby slippers are just not gonna do it. So I think I'm headed for the elevator. I'll be right with you guys in just a couple of seconds. As Dorothy makes her way here in the elevator, we'd just like to take this moment to thank all our sponsors for today, without which we simply could not host these industry events. Thank you. If I can remind you all to put your cell phones on silent, that would be great. And if you need the bathroom, well, it's too late. You should have gone earlier. For those watching online, you can participate in the chat window and we'll be throwing up links throughout the event for you to find out additional information.
that was crazy. How did you like it? It was a great start of the thing. I know it's pretty hot out there. Hang on. You gotta grab a little water, so because it's just been a busy morning running through the show. Mm. Great. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick tour because I surely couldn't show you the entire show. We just wanted to give everybody that's not able to be here this year just a little taste of the 61st annual Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. But boy, these ruby slippers are just not that much fun. I don't know how Dorothy did it. So as I said earlier, my name is Kitty McGowan, and I'm the president of the U.S. Super Yacht Association. And I'd love to welcome you all here to our annual meeting at the Bahia Mar. I'm so honored to be your host for today's meeting. And unlike anything that I've ever seen in my life, and I know that by the end of today, you guys are going to be tired and sick to death of hearing my voice. Um, creating this type of hybrid event was even more of a challenge than I think any of us ever anticipated. I thought, well, it'd be great because isn't it great to see people? I mean, isn't it great to see your friends? I mean, it's like, it just like warms my heart to see all of you together and have you all here with us. I mean, it's just been, it's just been such a crazy time. But every time I would come up with a new idea, Lee would scratch his head and say, well, well, okay. Well, so thanks to the technology gods and of course my guru Lee Savage from Between Two Yetis, we are now being broadcast to you in person from the BMR in Fort Lauderdale, streaming live on Zoom and also streaming live on Super Yacht Radio. So everybody said that an in-person event, no one's going to do it. No one's going to come. Clearly, we all proved them wrong. Um, but when it's nice that we're everybody socially distanced and we're uh, joining you online with nearly 150 of you here in person, nearly 100 online and thousands on Super Yacht Radio. So during this event today, we're going to kind of run it like a TV show. So we're going, our goal is to educate and entertain you, as you've clearly seen with Dorothy. But we also want to kind of tell you what we've been up to because, you know, it's been a while since we've all been together. So we want to, you know, through this crazy year, we want to kind of bring you <laughs> what's happening throughout the year, give a few awards to some extraordinarily deserving people and have some fun too. But today's meeting really is all about you. Because without you, our members, we're not here. So without you, our industry doesn't happen. And we just like to thank you all and recognize that. I also need to thank our sponsors because through this crazy year, as everybody knows, it's tough. I mean, it's tough to make things happen. It's tough to keep, get people's attention, but they've made today's, today's event possible. So we're gonna give them some commercial breaks in between and let them tell their story as well. And since this is such a unique event, I'd like everybody to do the, take a moment and check in online because social media, since we're so socially distanced and so separated, and just check in and hashtag, hashtag USSA. So that way everybody in the world knows that you're here with the USSA here together and celebrate our day. So despite all of the strife and the challenges that we've all faced this year, the U.S. Super Yacht Association always starts this meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of our board members to come up and lead us. So for those of you, if you wouldn't mind, please stand and join Bob Allen from Robert Allen Law in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. So while you're still standing, I would like to, us all to just take a quick moment of silence to recognize those friends, families, colleagues, and loved ones that we've lost through this crazy psychotic pandemic year, and as well keep the people of the 
engulf in our thoughts and hearts through the multitude of hurricanes that these guys have endured and just take a moment to thank them and keep them in our prayers. We're, those of you guys that are streaming in, one of our board members, John Fitzgerald, is in Alabama, and he's been humbled several times. So all of you guys are in our thoughts and prayers, and thank you so much. I appreciate that. We're so honored to have so many industry leaders from around the world with us today. And I really wish I had time to introduce everybody individually, but no, please, from our hearts, we're thankful that you're here and that you've taken the time to join us today, either in person or online. We even have one of the mayoral candidates running for office here in Fort Lauderdale with us today, Ken Cooper, because everybody knows that next Tuesday is election day, but from the looks of things, everybody's already voted. So, um, but he's here with us as well. And if you haven't had a chance to get to meet him, I would encourage you to say hi to Mr. Cooper. Oh, he's over here in the corner. Thank you, Ken, for joining us. So during this unprecedented event, those of you who are joining us online, uh, you're able to see and chat with each other because you're not able to be here and network in person. So you can chat with each other through the chat stream on the right-hand side. But we do request that you guys that are online keep it to the speaker view so that you can get the best presentation possible. So as you saw at the beginning of the show, when we did our walk through the show, this year's FLIBS is, isn't quite what we've all become used to. But you know what? Bigger isn't always better. But you know, unlike anything else, it's happening. Quite a feat in these days. I'm honored to have one of our partners here with us today, Phil Purcell, president and CEO of the MIASF, owners of the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show that stood up to the tremendous amount of conversation and controversy about whether or not to host this show. The USSA, we applaud and your fortitude and commitment that both MISF and Informa showed to bring this show to us. It's important to our community. It's important to our, our economy here in South Florida. And we know it's a different show, but it's clearly a step in the right direction to get our industry back and get us moving towards something and keep us working in the right direction. Please join me in welcoming Phil Purcell from the Marine Industries Association of South Florida. Good afternoon, welcome. What a nice audience to, to see everybody here. A lot of familiar faces. Uh, welcome to the 61st annual Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. So, you know, I'm going to take uh, a couple of like an hour or so. Um, so, you know, let's go back to January for a second. A lot of people in this room are leaders in their company and are leaders in my Disney opens up. And the same thing, the mouse is doing a good job. My sister, and I'm, I'm sharing this, this uh, out, of, out of the heart. She transplant patient, rejected her organ at the beginning of this year and uh, at University of Miami and waiting on a new organ. And so about three weeks ago, she said to me, I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm going to Disney. I don't really think you're crazy, but why are you going to Disney? She goes, I got to go on this ride called Pandora. I have no idea what Pandora is. Um, but that said, she went up there for three hours and walked Disney and felt very safe. Social distancing, mass and sanitation. Was it different? Just like the show. It's different. When you flew here, it was different. When you go to a restaurant, it's different. When I stay in a hotel, it's different. Get used to it because we don't know when the back end of COVID is. It's different. But we also had to determine that, create a roadmap, because as big as this show is it's to the state of Florida, billion three economic impact, 715 million in direct sales last year, it's different. But the community here, I get a call from a hotel on the beach. This is the best it's been in 10 months. Thank you. Got a call from a thing on Las Ola. Same thing, another middle of the hotel, Riverside Hotel. 85% occupancy. I get a call from the restaurants. Outback, you couldn't get in it last night. All the restaurants, are, thanks so much for doing this. Because guess what, guys? We had a bump. We had a bump that no one in this room planned. It. Nobody. And they found out that outdoor recreation is 2.2% of the GDP, right? Remember that? And half of that is us, boating, fishing, things like that. We knew it. Everyone else found that out. And, and so out of that, we got some coin in our pocket that we could keep in our pocket. We could not do it. But what I find is, a lot 
is people want to give opinions. And so social media is wonderful. Checked in, just like you said. But, you know, I have a, a thing in life, which is never take advice from someone you wouldn't ask their opinion of. They don't value their opinion. And so we follow that pretty hard. We followed it in my old business at Westport. You know, when we built fiberglass holes and everyone said, Billy's in the world. What do you used to say, right? All that plastic boat that they build over there, right? And, and so you, you, we're here today because all of you are here. And I'm really happy to see you here. Is it different out there? I can tell you this. Pat Healy sold four boats. He usually sells eight. That was the second day yesterday. It's about 40 million in sales. I can tell you that someone just signed a 50 meter contract. I can tell you that the center council is back. I can tell you the business is really good on the dock for the Wednesday. When we changed the show from getting rid of Monday to a Wednesday, remember that? I said, why are you doing that? Well, because Wednesday never felt, Monday never felt like a Wednesday. And that Wednesday here felt pretty, pretty normal. Today feels pretty good. So look, there's the detractors. I get it. But the roadmap that we create, it hopefully works for Paul's show. Hopefully it works for the Palm Beach show. Hopefully it works for our partner in this in Forma, which is 500 trade shows globally. This is the biggest event that has taken place in the United States. Not in our industry, in the United States. And so I'm getting with you. Sir. Um, but the other thing I want to talk about, too, is we've been working with NBC for three years. This year, tune in Sunday, would you? An hour special, 4.30 on NBC. Something we need as an industry, right? We need that platform. Townsend Bell came in, who's a commentator. Lee Diffie, you hear him on the Olympics, folks, Chris. The judges, everyone knows in this room, John Salupi, right? Craig Jackson, Bear Jackson Auctions. I called Craig up a few weeks ago. I said, hey, man, would you do me a favor and come to the Flips? He goes, I'm filming protocols. I need safety. I need to make sure. Said, okay, read this all secure. Hit send, 62 page document. He looks at it and says, yeah, I'll come. So he burns jet fuel, comes here was kind enough to be our speaker, was kind enough to be one of the judges. But guess what he's doing? Find a boat, find a house, stimulate the economy. So he's one of the judges, Matt Caldwell, the CEO of the Panthers. Why the Panthers? Because they're trying to put an arena right near our office and right downtown. Who wouldn't want to go to a hockey game and take a train to it, that, you know, and, and have all those things. And then we had Ricky Carmichael, who's a motocross guy. And, uh, I, I call him IB24, he's black tip age. He's, he's got two billion followers. And everything. He, so they pick the winner and the winner will be announced Sunday. But my point is, look, we can all have a difference of opinion and don't, no one should do what they don't want to do. And I respect that immensely, but do the same thing. Be respectful of the people who put their, who they are and the businesses. So when you think of an informa, they had to go borrow, I think, a billion four pounds to stay afloat. 3,500 employees globally, 70 on 17th Street. They count on this show, guys. And guess what? They're going to lose money doing this show, but that's the commitment to all you in this room at the end of the day. So I appreciate the platform. Enjoy your time here. Do it safely. Anything we can do for you while we're here, we're here to help. And, and again, thank you. Thank you so much, Phil, because without you guys, I mean, who knows? I mean, we, I mean, I'm sure everybody's read the news this week about the Miami International Boat Show, you know, canceling already, and they've canceled their, their first quarter. Dubai show has canceled. So to be able to be here together at a show with the community support, with the, the county support, the city support, it's, it's, it's really important to our economy and our community. So thank you so much. And thank you to the Informa team. We really appreciate everything. So with our, so with, um, today wouldn't be happening. I mean, we're able to pull all these things together without our sponsors. And I know everybody kind of dug deep and reached in and, uh, and showed their support and faith in the USSA. And so we really appreciate all they have done with us. And they're listed in your programs for those of you that are here in person on your table. And for those of you that are virtually, there's a link there as well that you can see it online. So, doesn't this slide really define this year? I mean, do you feel that, that you wake up and it's like just absolute craziness? But it has been a year. I mean, it's, it's not even Dorothy could have ever in her quest for Emerald City ever predicted today, this year. I mean, this is a year that feels like a decade and one that 
that started with so much promise. I mean, the, especially for USSA, our American pavilion at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show had grown in prominence. Our super yacht summit had gotten bigger and better and attracted an international attention. We had a pavilion at Mets. We had grown exponentially. We had events all over the country and the world. And then came COVID and a global pandemic that shook the world to its core and stopped everything in its tracks. In addition to COVID, we've endured hurricanes, fires, earthquakes, and let's not forget the lions and tigers and bears, oh my. We've withstood lockdowns, furloughs, reopenings, mysterious toilet paper shortages and chicken shortages, and yet we persevered. We've been restricted to travel between states and countries. We've had events canceled all over the world. We've endured supply chain restraints and added addition that have only added to the challenges that we all face. And yet we continue on. But what USSA and the other associations in our industry have done is that we've worked together and we've battled the states around the country to keep our industry deemed essential business. And it, as well as the right to use your boat, and we have succeeded. I mean, throughout all this craziness, many sectors of our industry, as Phil clearly said, have experienced record sales. I mean, the biggest challenge that many of them have is they don't have enough inventory because who would have ever figured that this year would be that year that you needed to socially distance and what better way to do that is then aboard your boat? Who knew? We've lost loved ones, spent our days sheltering in place and schooled on how to properly wash our hands, I've gotten used to hand sanitizers, social distancing, elbow bumps, and of course, let's not forget about the mask wearing. So while we're nearly 11 months into this year that, as I said earlier, clearly feels like a decade, we're still standing and we're standing together. We've used this, this term that we're, as the USSA, individually strong, but together a powerful force. And I can't think of any other time that this tagline has been more appropriate or more timely than this year. The mission statement that USSA has had is that we use to promote and support the US super yacht industry and its members globally through advocacy, marketing, and education. But it truly is through partnerships, collaboration, working together with like MIASF, but that's why we're here today. This has been even more significant and because clearly we are no longer in Kansas. In her quest to find Oz, Dorothy had a trusted team beside her, the Cowardly Lion, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow. The USSA has our partners that are those same partners, that we have our mission to bring the heart to support each other the knowledge to help our members grow in their businesses and the courage to overcome all of these challenges that we're facing. I mean, at the start of this crazy coronavirus, later to be known as COVID-19, due to the declining sales of Corona beer that some people thought was actually causing the virus. Every day, it's been something different, but our instantly our industry sprang into action. In the United States, all of the trade associations around the country held weekly calls. We kept each other informed. We worked together to keep our industry deemed essential we, and, and to keep our workers on the job. We've collectively lobbied Congress, even had some landmark legislation passed that have impacted as Phil uh, mentioned the outdoor industry as being a huge part of our GDP. This landmark legislation is impacting every segment. Your USSA board and my team quickly transitioned from our events that had to all be canceled, but thankfully we're all here today um, in a new direction to educate our members and the industry about the opportunities that were available to them to help them deal through this craziness with the PPP, the EIDL, 
we held a series of webinars and training sessions designed to help you guys figure out how to survive through this craziness. I mean, I don't know about you, but when COVID started, I thought, oh, yeah, a month or so, we'll be past this and move on. Yeah, we see where that is. Um, and let me see a show of hands. Has anybody who knew about Zoom before COVID? I had never heard about Zoom before, and I don't know about you. I mean, I know all of us are pretty Zoom weary. So all of you that are on Zoom, we appreciate you coming and joining us. <laughs> and uh, while we understand and recognize that this pandemic has, while in one position, brought a lot of prosperity to certain segments, it also has you know, created some constraints to other segments. Um, from a financial standpoint and from an employee standpoint, as it has done for the USSA. So we appreciate your continued support and we will continue to be here and work for you together. ROI has always been a huge part of what USSA has tried to provide. And we've rolled out some new membership benefits this year that is designed to help you guys meet such challenges as you guys have in your industry. We have a new health and disability program marketing support, and ideas on how to transition and market to this new world in this COVID crazy world that we live in. And all of these programs are designed for ROI Maxima. Special thanks to our team at uh, T. Spencer Samuels. I don't think they're here in person, but I know, oh, well, there's Kelly Spencer, uh, for stepping up and bringing us some of these great programs and benefits, especially during this time. Kelly was a great help and did some fantastic webinars for us to explain some of the things with um, EIDL and some of the PPP programs. We have a new relationship, which I'm very excited about, with Nova Southeastern University to provide critical frontline hazmat, hazwopper awareness safety and COVID-19 awareness saving safety training. Now, for those of us that live in OSHA dedicated states, these are mandatory for your employees to participate. But as a USSA member, now you can get those, those trainings that are required by OSHA free of charge. We're gonna send out the dates on this early next week, but I mean, this has an opportunity to save our members hundreds and possibly thousands of dollars. Other new programs includes, include ways to promote your business through partnerships with um, our Between Two Yetis and Savage to create videos because now we've gone to online and, and more social programming to tell our stories um, to promote your business as well as a special members only package with Super Yacht Radio. So while in-person networking has been nearly non-existent, our team has been hosting online networking I don't know those of you that have joined us for a couple of our online happy hours. We've had some fun and drinking and cooking and, and enjoying each other. Um, but it's, it is really our, it, our effort to try and resume in-person events as soon as possible. But as I, as I said at the outside, membership is our lifeblood. And this is where all of you come in. If even half of you here bring in one new member or renew your membership, just imagine how much stronger our voice will be in Washington. But despite all the craziness of this year, we do, as, an, as a small and young association, we're only 14 years old, uh, we continue to be geographically and internationally dispersed. And we have a variety of different sectors of the industry that are members with us. We're currently have members in 24 states and 25 countries. And we're really privileged that a lot of you have decided to stay with us for many years and we've got some members celebrating their anniversaries this year. We'd like to thank them for their continued support and they're also listed in your program. So we have our 10 year and five year members. So let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much. And next year, we're celebrating our 15th anniversary, and we look forward to having everybody here, hopefully, together. 
I know I couldn't have gotten through this crazy year without a Cracker Jack team, which sadly, because of COVID, has gotten solved a little smaller like many of our businesses um and i'd like to definitely take this moment to thank julie sack who celebrated 17 years working with me imagine working with me for 17 years she still has all of her hair and she still likes me which is a really crazy thing robert perry who's the nephew of one of our board members julie perry has been doing all of our social media and he keeps us very very focused thank you so much um, a special thank you to a volunteer who's helped us because we've been so short staffed this year, Ther Teresa Dragatz, who has been an invaluable volunteer as well. This, as we said, this unprecedented uh, in person weren't for an army of people. And as I mentioned before, our our guru Lee and and our friends all over the world, our partners that you're gonna see here shortly. But I'd also like to thank um, our friends from Super Yacht Radio, Dave and Maeve Dempsey, who at the beginning of COVID said, hey, do you need an opportunity to tell your story worldwide? And since the middle of March, we've USSA has held a weekly show on Super Yacht Radio. So we're able to tell the world our story and talk about our members. So we've had the opportunity to tell the rest of the world that what we're doing here is not necessarily what they might see in the news. But through this all, we've done this all together. We've adapted, we've transitioned, even done a pivot or two, my least favorite world word in the world. Um, and we traveled down the yellow brick road in an attempt to get to the Emerald City and back to some semblance of normalcy. As I said at the beginning, we're going to take one quick short commercial break, but when we get back to, we're going to have, uh, we're going to hear from our chairman in San Diego, and we're going to get to the next section. So let's give a moment to thank our sponsors. And those of you that are here with us, you can continue eating your lunch and we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Thanks so much. Our internet connection today is brought to you by the team at JV Connectivity, Super Yacht Cellular Data. Thanks, guys. See you at the show. Hi, I'm Bob Allen, and I work with a law firm known as Robert Allen Law. We're a law firm dedicated to serving the needs of people in the yacht industry. And that means manufacturers, that means brokers, that means buyers, that means sellers, that means banks, that means people who sell all sorts of things and services to the yacht industry. We're a team of lawyers that has experience in virtually all the fields surrounding this business. And if you're in the business, you know how important it is to work with lawyers who know yachts, right? And know the type of problems that arise and know how to solve them. Our job as lawyers is to help deals get done. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, be of service to the industry. And we look forward to hearing from you if the need arises. Hi everybody, I'm Gene Moran. I'm a member of the U.S. Super Yacht Association and also proud to sponsor today's event. I may not look at the way I'm dressed today, but I know Washington. And if you're selling to the Washington DC environment or you have a policy that's affected by government decision making, I can probably help you out and help your business out. I hope we can connect. Enjoy the show.
Thank you so much for indulging us and giving us an opportunity to let our sponsors uh, get a chance to tell their story. So every village has a chief, that guiding force, that voice of reason, that has the ability to keep things focused throughout all the craze, especially this year. Um, and often the one who talks me off the ledge. <laughs> this woman has demonstrated both steady and strong dynamic leadership over the past couple of years for the USSA. And as someone I am so proud to call my friend, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Kate Pearson with Safe Harbor Marinas, this year's 2020-2021 chairman of the US Super Yacht Association. Take it away, Kate. Thanks so much, Kitty, and it's so great to be here, albeit virtually. Greetings from the San Diego Yacht Club. Wow, what a year it has been, um, and, and a year that's been different for just about all of you. The pandemic has impacted all of us in, in different ways. We're sequestered in our homes, trying to adapt, protect, and keep our families safe. In this process, some of us have also become teachers, daycare workers, and tech experts, while others have tried to take care of elderly folks and family. Along the way, we've also lost friends, family members, and colleagues. But this pandemic has provided us with some important moments to just take pause and reflect about the most important things in our life. We've gotten to know each other in ways we never previously thought we would, via Zoom, in our living rooms, with our dogs barking and our children running behind the screens. We've dealt with unbelievable stress, the fear of the unknown, uncertainty, and ever-changing business dynamics. And for some of us, it's been a really busy year as boating became one of the few safe activities for the country to enjoy. Through, this, through all of this, we've created some long-term and strong partnerships and collaborations around the country and the world. As an association, we're working hard to transition our efforts to focus on new and innovative ways to provide continue and important values to our members and to the industry. As an association, we're working hard to transition our traditional offerings, pivot, and respond to what our members in the industry needs. Traditionally, the USSA has been a four-pronged stool, which was our approach in hitting what the value adds were for our members. That is advocacy, marketing, education, and events. This year, due to not being able to do any events except this one, which is great, we've really restructured and taken a step back and looked within ourselves, polled our members and talked to the board about how we move forward. Well, what changes our delivery method? Normally we would meet and uh, interact socially, both business and you know, networking events all over the country and all over the world, quite frankly, you know, we were supposed to be in Monaco when it met, and of course now it flips. Really what changed is our method of delivery. We took a deep, long look at our website and we decided that it was gonna be the communication tool that the association needed during this. Um, big shout out to Stephen Myers and the team at Yotco for their support during all of this. Um, you guys have been great, much appreciated. The other thing we did is we, we lent on social media. It became a wonderful way to talk about our new members, um, what the latest, closures were working with customs and border protection as we were our, our friends in maine reached out when they were quarantined and south florida wasn't how did the boats transition how do the boats quarantine what are we going to do so social media media really became our friend and the adoption of technology um i've actually seen the more board more this year via zoom calls than i normally would in you know a couple of face-to-face -face meetings so it, it's been great and the board reacted kind of differently based on their regions um my wonderful vice chair diane byrne um really you know up in new york um in in new jersey um really had it harder i think than than the rest of the crowd because she was the epicenter of you know the pandemic in the u.s so um how people dealt with it really de 
depended on where they were. Um, the Pacific Northwest out of the gates hit it really badly as well. Um, so they hit it really hard. I think uh, all of us in the sunnier, warmer climates of um, you know San Diego and, and South Florida um, just reacted a, a little bit different to, to up north. Kitty, you are so right. That's one of the joys of our board member board meetings is is checking in, doing a check in. How's your business doing? I can tell you that I've heard unanimously from all different sectors of our industry that everyone's business is doing really well. Um, and so that is great. I think out of all of this, we've had a somewhat of a silver lining that boating um, is the, a really safe, fun thing to do with your family. I, I think that, that the support for one another has just been incredible. Um, this board stepped in, stepped up, agreed to Zoom, adopted a new platform, um, which is called Boardable, thanks to our marketing co-chair, Julie Perry, um, and really listened on how we can support each other as board members, but also how we can support the industry, what we needed to do. It was really fantastic. Our amazing board members checked in regularly from all different regions across the country to give us updates on what was happening, what quarantine looked like, what it didn't look like, if there was, if there wasn't, if, if crew could get in, if flights were operating. It was just incredible. Well, we're actually looking at the upside of the pandemic and people being able to get together by Zoom. Uh, we love having your owners and captains at the table, but literally getting to the ta getting them to the table is often too hard. They're in different areas, they're flying in, they're flying out, um, they're in the Bahamas, they're in the US, wherever they are. We are going to do a state of the industry event with top captains and owners talking about what 2021 is going to look like, where they're going and how they're navigating through these uncertain times really excited. I want you all to, to keep an eye out for the invitation to come and join. I'd like to give a really special shout out to Patient Cone of the Marine Industries Association of South Florida um, and Duncan Smith of Smith Advocacy Group. You guys have been amazing keeping us updated and stay in touch through all of this. Thanks guys. Um, I also want to give special thanks to the legislative teams at the MRAA and the NNMA. We connected with them on a monthly basis to talk again, you know, about the regions, about what they're seeing. Um, and it was fantastic. Thanks again, you guys. Our advocacy board team over this past year was led by Jay Dayton from Avon Dixon Insurance and by Herman Punt of Denison Yacht Sales, whose former Coast Guard experience proved to be invaluable during the US flag registry issues. Sadly, this year we lost Truman to his battle with brain cancer, but thanks to his tremendous input, counsel, unwavering support of the industry and the USSA, I would like to award him with the 2020 Chairman's Award. Unfortunately, I can't be there in person to present this award to his Lisa, his longtime partner, Lisa. So instead, I'm gonna hand it over Kitty, to Kitty um, with respect and, and, and sadness. Herman, you'll be missed. Thanks, Kitty. Thanks so much, Kate. Um, yes, it's, it has been a tough year. So uh, we have a, a quick promo um, video about Herman. And uh, if we just take a moment here, we'll read that and then we'll present that award. Our friend Herman grew up boating with his family on the Jersey Shore in the Florida Keys, where his lifetime love for the water was born. After attending the Hargrave Military Academy in Virginia, Herman graduated high school and then later joined the U.S. Coast Guard, where he served as a law enforcement and search and rescue officer. Little did he know that that Coast Guard experience would later become a massive asset to him throughout his yachting career. After honorably leaving the Coast Guard, Herman followed his first love of food and hospitality that led him to Sea Isle City, New Jersey to run his family's successful restaurant business. For those of you who have enjoyed some of Herman's cooking and incredible hospitality, you could see that he was a multi-talented guy and a great chef. But ultimately, 
Like so many of us in the yachting business, the power, draw, and allure of the sea steered him to a career in yachting. Herman earned his captain's license, and after several years of running and maintaining yachts, he became a yacht broker, a traditional path for so many of people in our industry. He then moved on to become the sales and charter side of the business and became a big leader for the Hargrave Yachts line. After 10 years with Hargrave, Herman joined Denison Yachting as their charter director where he continued to work until his passing this summer. A tough time for all of us. Herman's industry knowledge was vast and detailed. He was such an asset to the USSA when we marched the halls of Congress through the American Boating Congress. But more than anything, he will be remembered by so many of us for his endless smile, joy of life, incredible hospitality, and mostly his sense of fun. None of us will forget his unending love for his Lisa. We will all treasure Herman and his memory and he will never be forgotten in our industry. Thank you. Unfortunately, Lisa can't be here in person, but she is online. So for those of you that have joined us online, if you can just reach out in the chat and just say hi. Um, for those of you that knew Herman, he was a dear friend. I know that we'll all miss him. And Lisa, I'll be sure to get you this award. And I hope that we can share a glass or a bottle or six of rosé sometimes. <laughs> this been that kind of year. In keeping with Herman's tradition of strong knowledge and broad-based industry experience, we're delighted that another member of the Denison team is joined our board in the advocacy role. And we're welcome to um, add Clive McCartney, um, who has joined Jay Dayton this year's board to continue Herman's legacy of supporting our advocacy issues. So we'd like to welcome him. In addition, other board members that are with us, uh, this is our group of at-large that round out our board and like to give them a big thank you for taking their time, energy, and um, enthusiasm for our, the USSA and our mission. So thank you so much to all of these guys that have done such a good for us. So on a positive advocacy note, we added a couple of boats to the U.S. flag register. Um, and we're excited to be able to introduce you, J.R. Reidinger, the owner of Utopia 4, to give his perspective on flagging his yacht U.S. So, hey, Mr. Reidinger. Hi, I'm J.R. Reidinger, the owner of Super Yacht Utopia 4. You know, in the past, large mega yachts, which are mainly foreign built now, had to be foreign flagged, and there was no mechanism to have U.S. flag for these types of vessels. But thanks to the USSA's efforts, the John McCain National Defense Authorization Act was passed in 2019, which provides large yachts over 300 tons a path to be U.S. flagged. So as a patriotic U.S. family with a large U.S.-based global e-commerce and product brokerage business, MarketAmericanShop.com, we were thrilled to have Utopia 4 be a U.S. documented vessel and immediately acted upon the opportunity to fly the U.S. flag. Utopia 4 is an integral part of our lives as well as being a digital office and work and meeting place in any location in the world. She also is a symbol of, a, of success by following your dreams. So it's only fitting that this beacon of freedom proudly fly the stars and stripes. So we're proud to be one of the first vessels to register under the U.S. flag and hope that many more will follow soon. It opens the door to greater operational freedom and far less time constraints. This also is important in chartering a vessel as it allows many more options and flexibility to cater to and to satisfy the guests. You know, I believe that being an American flag passes on these huge benefits to future yachters who buy the yacht. So it's a tremendous benefit or advantage in resale that every owner has to factor in. So having experienced this and the complications and problems, even with foreign warranties of a foreign built, hauled and flagged yacht, I would only entertain a US flagged vessel going forward personally. 
But with more foreign-built vessels becoming U.S. flagged in the future, perhaps foreign manufacturers without a U.S. presence will consider investing in U.S. networks for warranty service. That would be great. So thank you very much for your time as we are thrilled to proudly fly our flag. Your association has been working for years to make happen, and those are to hear the voices of the owners saying that they're happy to do it. Thing that that Mr. Reitinger didn't mention is that the additional uh, job opportunities for U.S. crew, and so that's another important part of flagging U.S. And we just like to thank him for taking the time to make that happen. So since we talked at the beginning of the show, um, our association advocacy has been a huge part of our mission. Through all these crazy times, we've continued to work hard with our partner organizations, keep our voices strong in Washington. So while we weren't able to participate in American Voting Congress this year, we continue our work on behalf of the super yacht industry as, as Kate mentioned, working with MIASF on crew issues and allowing crew to come and go into the United States and trying to make it much more productive for people to work in our industry. But we look forward to hopefully bringing everybody back to the Hill last year. So if you'd like to get a taste of what it's like and how they make the sausage in Washington, Lee Savage and the team at, the, at, at uh, Between Two Yetis followed the USSA team uh, two years ago. I mean, actually, in two, it just feels like two years ago. It was 2019. Um, and created a complete documentary of our trip to of, to our trip to ABC. You can enjoy the entire event online. It's going to be on our USSA website as well as the BetweenTwoYetis.com. Those of you that started here earlier got to see a little preview, but I encourage you to take the time to get an idea of really what the association and all of the industries are doing to work on our collective behalf behind the scenes. So if you can't go to DC, there's also that you can help support the industry efforts by supporting the Boating United PAC Fund. This PAC is a compilation of every sector of the industry, and you can find their link in the chat session as well. So while one half of our very talented marketing team is always telling our story online, the other half is always working on the numbers and keeping us focused because that's that extra value and that's the thing that everybody always asks about. Bert Fowles of IGY Marinas is here with us today to give us some great perspectives of the industry and update us as to how this global pandemic has really impacted us. We had hundreds of people that joined in and, and let us know what their thoughts were to our survey and Bert is here to kind of give us an overview on the real impacts of COVID as well as travel around the world. So please join me in welcoming Bert Fowles, IGY Marinas. Thank you for the whoop whoop, that was good. Look, we've all been there, you guys are incredible. I'm gonna try and do this in seven minutes um, because I value your time and we're all busy. My job today is to present to you information to help your business. If you are here, I'm quite amazed because I didn't know we'd have so many, so I'm a bit nervous on this one, but let me just put it this way. The information I'll give you will present actionable intelligence based on reality. Over almost 100 people responded to the survey. So I'm gonna work you through carefully and also talk about the future. Before I start, I really wanna thank my fellow board members and everyone who's here today, Mark Welch, uh, for the Mountain Dew and making sure the presentation looked good. Julie Perry for just being in. And all the young members on the board, I think to hear a Zach or another member, Mark. It's incredible to hear young people in our industry and it's a pleasure to work. I hope, on, I, hope I don't disappoint. Or I'm gonna go through the six minutes. Julie, I think you've got the slide. Here's the dealio. First, I'm gonna tell you about the organization because if you're walking around today, you're not gonna remember anything. So let's see this. Forty-eight percent. Excuse me. I represent. Mike, got your name, Mike. Okay. Forty-eight percent. 
of the United States are USA members, okay? Uh, yes, we should clap for that because some of those states don't have uh, land. So let's clap for that. Here we go. Number one, 48% of everyone in this room represents half the country. That is amazing. Let me move forward. 12% of the world's nations are represented by the USA. So 48 and 12. 12% of the nations. By the way, did you know there are 195, 95 countries in the world? Little Google fact that came up. Okay. Last but not least, membership. 70% of us work in service. 30% something. Important to remember. We are a diverse industry, but that's the facts of our membership, 381. And last but not least, you hear me say this all the time, 80% of us are small businesses. That means 80 employees and less. By the way, the official description of a small thing is under 400 employees. So we need to understand that when, to, we, when people talk about big boats, we're talking about small business. Let me advance a little further. Okay, next one, please. So we reached out. When I went out to the membership, everyone said, what do we do about our business? I said, I wish I knew I do not know. So I said, let me get information that makes sense. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go again. Okay, so here's what came back from the survey of, all, of our industry. And I'm going to extrapolate this to say, here's what's affecting our businesses. 83% of what COVID did to us was on customer growth and 66% on staff retention. 59%, we took our budgets and put them towards social media. By the way, just a little test. Your marketing budget is usually between 3 and 4% of your gross sales. If it goes up, you're in a fever. If it goes less, you're not spending enough. And you don't get credit for spending too much. So immediately, we're able to drop to the bottom line if we cut our marketing budgets up by 4%. But of course, we had other effects. Now, here's some interesting news. Did we get in? Remember, we're 80% small businesses. 53% of our members did not get any help. 47% did. And I reiterate, we are small businesses. PP, that means all the to help us decide where we're going. When it comes to when, when will we attend an in-person event, there's some optimism, uh, but we're looking at 2020 as the main instigator. Now, look, I'm just giving you the data that was reported to me. I'll give my insights, but I'm just telling you what the overall impact was from the survey. Next slide, please. Okay. When will we return to normal? Um, you know, it takes a lot to fill for ourselves to the world, the organizations. We need to have a direction forward as to what we plan to do. But what our membership is saying, what the super ed industry is saying, that we will return to normal. 2021, but there is some view that it won't be till 2022. Next slide, please. Okay, how are we impacted? A great quote I heard from uh, our CEO is Bo Yachting. And I thought that was a pretty good way to put it because also my boss, so I said, yeah, that's really good. Um, how are we affected overall? Uh, I sort of kept the number of odds. I don't want you to leave with it. A majority of us were affected negatively. Some were positive and a small amount were neutral. So I'm trying to give you a direction as to how we as an industry are going um, from that standpoint. Next slide, please. Okay, what top things change? Usually you give the ascending line, but I thought I'd just break up that line of sight. Let me just cut straight to the chase. Number one was working remotely. A small business, is, it's difficult to even sometimes pay the internet bill with the rising costs, but we were looking at increased Technological costs, by the way, those are sunk costs. We had to pay. Then came down to one important thing, employees, but there is some good news there. And then came down, you'll notice the red with collection. Some customers we will not get back. Next slide, please. Okay, where did we cut? Travel, 48%. I don't think that's anyone's surprise. Marketing, you know, that's my world. That's a tough one. Because that leads to my team, at least everyone's teams. But that's what was cut as well. Staffing, 24%. You can get all these slides, by the way, guys. We'll have them up and promote them. So I appreciate it. You'll be able to get them. Um, I'm not going to go through this whole wheel because, you know, it doesn't make sense to read it. But this is sort of the life cycle that we're going through right now. If anything else, it's a good slide to read while you're sitting at the boat show and maybe have a few seconds. Take a look at how your business is doing. I'm doing it, to, I'm doing it for IGY. 
Next. Okay, let's go on to some market data. This is sort of exciting. March 2020, this, this is where the boats were. That's a fact. 5,000 vessels had their AIS on, and that's where they were. Okay? So when trouble hit, that's where we were going. No one can read those smaller numbers because I just didn't make it look cool. Next. This is where we are today. This month. That's how many boats. There are our customers right there. 5,400. By the way, more boats turned on their AIS. Good news is there's more boats sitting up on that, on that screen. We have an amazing opportunity, and I really enjoyed what was by the U.S. flag vest. We're an American company. Excuse me. We're an, a U.S. association, but we do represent both, especially from a small, small business standpoint. Okay, i got to really speed up now. Next slide, please. Well, it stopped. That was good. Okay, here's what's really interesting. This is a crucial figure for craziness. percent of the fleet in the day can say that's wrong. Here's what's really scary. Oh. Okay. What you're seeing is fleet movement of transient vessels. Of the total number of vessels in the world that were tracked at the time, you can debate me on the number of vessels. I have no problem with that, but I'm going to use hard data that where I was able to say the boat turned its AS on. 6% of the fleet moved in March. What is really challenging for us going forward? Look at those numbers. But expect to see a 6% perhaps in August, September, October, a 4%. We have to keep a structure together as an industry to show we are operational and look at things in a different pragmatic way. So if you're speaking to your banker, you're speaking to your loan officer, you're speaking to your employees, in a normal world, that number 6% would repeat somewhere. I'm not saying it would go further. I'm not saying it, I'm giving you an idea that we're not seeing vessels move. There is some good news. Next slide, please. I'm not going to read these because you, you'll get them there. But we have to remember this. It's not about us. It never was about us. It never will be about us. It's about the customer and how safe they feel. And if we're able to do that and get in a room as we are doing today, or we're looking at the industry, we will win our customers. But there has to be a strategic approach in that regard. Next slide, please. So what we're looking for together is a uniform way of looking at the current environment. Notice I'm not saying the COVID environment, but it is. But if we look at it, there's companies, MPT, everyone in here now has a structure. We now have a new sign on the door. Here's my point. An industry approach that is uniform across the industry, the, our business cycles will bring customers. Next slide, please. So I'm not going to read these, but these are the two top, these are the top 10, what I've spoken, data says that we have to create. They are no, there's nothing up here that we cannot do, but it's very important that we create a structure. If we don't, it's going to lead to guesswork. And let me give you a specific example. Most persons who charter or have a YF mega yacht do have influence in our world, whether the healthcare, well, by the way, healthcare is the number one concern of owners. I've done three studies. It's the number one, number one. So add COVID into the mix, bring our industry in that regard. So I'll leave you with that just as a single takeaway. Next slide, please. And I'll just cut to the bottom line. Success, we have to work through this together. What that means is everyone in this room as an association, if you have specific instances that you'd like us to bring to market or bring out to other members, please let us know. There are people in the marina business, the dockage business, training business, but if we're able to have a consistent set of policy, I've said this two years ago, Cake Baking Society of the United States, Cake Baking, the National Cake Baking Society has rules. I think we can too. And that was it. Thank you. Clearly a lot taller than I am. Thank you so much, Bert. Um, we love your very melodious, melodious voice, and uh, 
and I've been heard, I've been told that you are the second most handsome man in the yachting industry. So thank you for sharing your time with us. Bert always brings some interesting facts to the table and I look forward to uh, sharing them all with you guys after uh, this uh, presentation today. So through all of this craziness, not all of the owners have been escaping on their yachts during this pandemic. There's one owner that has used his yacht and his time on board for a different purpose, to truly make a difference in the lives of many around us. Is this year's Winter Beacon Award? It was created to recognize those in the industry that have been given of themselves to not only the industry, but our community at large. I know Julie Berry was our last year's winner of that for all of her work that she did for the people of the Bahamas. And so at the onset, at the onset of COVID, Mr. Gene Rothberg, the owner of Motor Yacht G Machine, started working on the creation of an inexpensive test to detect COVID-19 that the average person could use at home. All of this was done aboard his yacht. This test is currently under FDA uh, review for emergency authorization. They're hoping the approval will be happening soon. We couldn't think of anybody more deserving of this year's Beacon Award than Mr. Rothberg. We'd like to thank he and his team so much aboard the Gene Machine for all that they've been doing to protect us from around the world world. And so after we hear from Mr. Rothberg, we're going to take one more commercial break to thank our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll have our golden compass award presentations and final thoughts. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with you guys. Hello, and thank you all for being here. My name is Dr. Jonathan Rothberg. I am an American scientist and founder of the Fork Catalyzer Incubator, an inventor of fast DNA sequencing. I am also the proud owner of the 180-foot Amos Motor Yacht Gene Machine. I'd like to say thank you to Kitty McGowan and the Association's Board of Directors. I am honored to be recognized for this year's Beacon Award for the efforts we have and continue to put into fighting the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. My companies, Homodeus, Butterfly, AI Therapeutics, and Hyperfine have all been working very hard at coming up with testing and treatment solutions to assist with getting the world back on its feet. I believe that frequent testing is the key to making that happen. Current COVID-19 testing options are unreliable, expensive, slow, and often uncomfortable. While on board Gene Machine in early March, I made it my goal to create accurate, affordable, and simple testing that can be done anywhere. We quickly transformed the onboard laboratory into a prototyping and testing workshop. This allowed me to work closely with our teams in Connecticut from on board the vessel. In fact, just this weekend, our tests were able to protect my family and detect a visitor was positive with COVID before he entered our house. Again, I'd like to thank the U.S. Super Yacht Association and its members for this award and for all they do in supporting and advocating for the yachting industry here in the United States. I hope everyone has a successful Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. Please don't forget your masks. We wish to thank the team from All Points Boats, Nate Goodwin, Kyle Mooney, Chelsea Goodwin, Colin Sator, for doing a magnificent job in fabricating our spectacular awards for today's event. Find out more about what they do at APB1.com.
I'm Baxter Underwood with Safe Harbor Marinas, and I'm coming to you virtually to say thank you for our partnership. I wish we could be together in person. Maybe we will be again soon, uh, but we're glad to be together with you virtually. Uh, recently, Safe Harbor made an announcement about a partnership that we have with Sun Communities that's gonna help us grow even more in the months and years ahead, and we're excited to grow together in partnership with you. So thanks for your partnership, and we look forward to a great conference. With over 60,000 unique listeners every month, Supiot Radio is the ideal platform to deliver your message direct to industry decision makers around the world. Effectively communicating your brand in your own voice, our broadcast, podcast, advertising and sponsorship options reach 105 countries and are a unique way to reach your target audience. Talk to us at supiotradio.com and let your voice reach the global Supiot community. Back. Special thanks. Let's give another round of applause to Mr. Rothberg and the Motor Yacht Gene Machine. This year's winner of the Beacon Award will make sure that Mr. Rothberg gets his award. The final legs of our four legged membership operational stool are education and events. And despite all the global cancellations, we haven't really stopped efforts on behalf of the members, especially this year in terms of education. As outset of the meeting, we've made some significant COVID pivots that have enabled us to continue to provide valuable resources and ROI to our members. After had, we had to cancel the Super Yacht Summit, our summit chair, USSA Vice Chair, Diane Byrne of Mega Yacht News, and the summit committee worked together to quickly transition and provide the summit content free of charge to through dozens of webinars to hundreds of people uh, over the course of several weeks. As I mentioned earlier, our goal is to ultimately get back to in-person events and educational forums as quickly as possible. But in the meantime, we already got a plan for 2021 to continue to provide you guys with educational opportunities and things to, include, to improve your businesses. I know that we are all experiencing a certain amount of Zoom fatigue, but stay tuned for some more educational forums that will keep us plugged in to the next slot, to the next year. So through all this craziness that we've endured this year, the one thing that I feel that everybody has learned, savor every precious moment of every day, because you never know what might happen. So today is the day. This has never been so poignant and meaningful as it has been this year. When the USSA first created our Golden Compass Award, it was designed to be a tribute and serve as a lifetime achievement award to the most deserving individual in our industry who helped steer and focus our industry in a true direction. We've had some extremely deserving winners of this award since its inception seven years ago, but it's doubtful that any of them embodied its intentions more than this year's winner, Bob Rossioli of Rossioli Outing Center. 
I know that I'm not alone when I say they truly built when Bob Rossioli was born. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think of him and miss his wise counsel, especially uh, those of you who know that him, that knew him. He election year, and I'm sure that Bob is giving the whatnot to God and the angels up there about what's happening with the election next week. If you indulge me for one moment, I'd like to give one couple of minutes of tribute to Bob Rossioli and his wonderful legacy here in our industry. The amazing story of Bob Rossioli is reminiscent of some of the great titans of American history, those like Henry Ford or Thomas Edison, who were visionary, tenacious, hardworking, and unwavering in their pursuit of excellence. Like those legends, Bob came from humble beginnings, only to spend his lifetime clawing his way to the top of the luxury yacht industry with a strong work ethic, grit and determination, dedication to his family, and a never-ending drive to perfect his craft. He not only pushed limits, he created new technology and never understood the meaning of the word no. He often quoted his hero, Vince Lombardi, who summed it up like this, the measure of who we are is what we do with what we have. Bob has never been afraid to do what was necessary to support his family by doing a variety of odd jobs throughout his life. These go from hauling ice to pumping fuel for yachts docked at Bahia Mar and Pier 66. This is where he got his first introduction to the world of yachting. It's truly clear that the apple didn't fall too far from the tree because Bob's mother always taught him, your name is the most important thing that you have. Bob spent his lifetime making sure that every job he completed was his absolute best. While he spent his career becoming famous for his incredible talents with a paintbrush and work ethic, it was his strength of character and the man he was that truly defined him. He spent time mentoring others, hiring and training those that no one else would. He was always there to listen to anyone that ever needed an ear. He would suggest ideas and provide support to anyone in need, but mostly, it was his unwavering and incredible support and leadership that he demonstrated in our industry that will forever be a part of Bob's legend. To so many of us, Bob always seemed to be larger than life, but he never took any of it for granted. Bob's mantra, today is the day, will live on forever in the thousands of people who got to learn from the master. He will be missed by so many and will always be a part of our hearts. But Bob's legend will live on in all of us who have been honored to know him. Thank you. I'm really honored to have nearly the Sioli family here with us to experience Golden Compass Award. Sorry. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Chi and trusted friend Jess Liva for being such incredible supporters of the USSA and the industry. And in addition to the award, one of my fondest memories with Bob and your whole family was sharing a bottle of bubbles during your ho holiday yard events. So I'd like to present the award in a bottle of bubbles that I hope that you guys will open and toast and enjoy the wonderful memories that we can all share of a man that has left us way too soon. So let's please, can Sharon, would you like to come up for Robbie? A lot shorter than my father ever was, but uh, excuse me, I want to uh, accept this award. Thank uh, U.S. Super Yachts, and um, my father will be really honored to receive this, and I am honored as well. Uh, for me and my my mother, and my my sister, 
to carry on that legacy and uh, business as usual. Thanks, Robbie. I really appreciate you guys being here and being continuing support to all of us. As a tough one. <laughs> the, so, as we've talked about, the USSA structure has board members representing nearly every region of the country, as well as partner organizations similar to MIASF that represent us around the world where owners, captains, charterers want to spend time. This next segment will provide you with some updates that might help you guys kind of navigate the uncertain times that we're living in. I'm excited to be able to bring you a discussion from every major region of the U.S. and the Bahamas to see how 2020 has impacted. So if you could stand by for a quick minute, I'm going to pop behind the magic curtain to join the wizard and this fantastic panel we're going to take. One after that, we're going to take one final break to promote our sponsors, and when we return, our regional and international updates with news about the America's Cup, the YPY Leadership Award, and final wraps. So, we'll see you guys in just a few. guys i'm back and to, thanks to the wonders of zoom and technology i've joined our members from around the country for our updates from everywhere so i'm very excited so let's just touch base with everybody as we go around the country and we're going to get updates on what's been happening through this crazy tumultuous world we've been having so todd how can you todd roberts from marine group boat works in san diego can you hear me i can hear you kitty and thanks for thanks for including us Things are going strong in Southern California. It's sunny and 70 degrees as usual. Uh, super yacht boat is, is traffic is way up. We've uh, we had 17 calls of vessels over 100 meters, which was a record for San Diego. Uh, San Diego has been relatively transparent and communicates well with uh, crews on how they can repatriate crew. So at the beginning of this mess, it was a little sticky as to whether or not California was a port you wanted to enter, but it turned out it was a great place and uh, things are going strong here. 
That's fantastic. I'm so happy to hear it. And you also have a yard in Mexico as well, right? I mean, so that you can do work back and forth. Has that been going well? We do. Our Cabo San Lucas yard is open, uh, has remained open the entire time. Uh, Mexico was a little more wishy-washy on what their process was going to be for yachts coming in, but uh, nobody saw a wrinkle there, and boats were able to move freely between Mexico and California. Well, that's fantastic to hear because I know we haven't had such good luck in the northern part, but I know Peter's going to talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, so we're going to go up the coast, up through California, up to the great state of Washington, and our former, uh, another former board member and uh, with the Northwest Marine Trade Association, Peter Schrappen. So Peter, can you hear me out there in Seattle? Yeah, happy Friday. How's it going, everybody? Oh, just fantastic. I wish you could be here and I wish everybody could be in the same room, but I really appreciate you guys jumping on this call to join everybody today. So, uh, so tell me what's been happening. I mean, everybody's always seeing Washington State in the news these days, but but it's been good news, I think, for the boating industry. Yeah, exactly. We've been gearing up for what's going to be an incredibly busy couple of years for us with the uh, upcoming Olympics and America's Cup. And just right now, just yesterday, I was visiting in Port Angeles. Hodor and Lonian are in town, as well as Calix. And we were able to take some legislators wow. to uh, Platypus Marine in the Port of Port Angeles to see them and uh, check everything out. Oh, that's, that's really great news. And, uh, and I know that uh, between the Northwest Marine Trade Association and us and with the uh, the NMMA, we were able to open some routes up for uh, visiting uh, yachts to Alaska once Alaska finally opened. So tell us, how did they do this year? You know, uh, for those interested in going to Alaska, I can tell you that the Pacific Northwest in general is open for business. It is difficult to get from the United States to Canada, but uh, for Alaska, if you want to go visit, I'd really encourage uh, explorers to visit COVID-19 dot Alaska dot gov before you head out. But yeah, they've been seeing so, an influx in activity there as well. And that's great. And, and I mean, and a bad thing turned into a good thing when the cruise ship stopped running. It gave a lot more opportunities for super yachts to have places to go stay, right? Exactly. Yep. They've uh, they've been in and around, and we've been uh, using Super Yacht Northwest, our friends with Super Yacht Northwest, to showcase all the amenities that the Pacific Northwest has to offer. And the Pacific Northwest is has, is a great destination, and I'm happy to hear that uh, more super yachts are heading your way. And we it, this is a trend that we have been seeing for a couple years, correct? Exactly, we just continue to build on uh, legislative wins and marketing wins. And I did reference Super Yacht Northwest and I'd be remiss if I didn't showcase their, their website, synw.org. And we always enjoy our partnership with USSA. And, I, and we're gonna put that little link in our feed on the side so that anybody who wants to go to Super Yacht Northwest, and we really appreciate them participating as a sponsor with us as well this year. And uh, so, and thank you too, Peter, for joining us. So My pleasure. We're take a quick flight across the U.S. and head to the the Northeast into my one of my favorite towns. And I'm very sad because of all this crazy COVID. We didn't get much time with you guys this year. So um, I have uh, Veronica Brown and Eli Dana from a Safe Harbor Newport Shipyard. I still have a a little bit of a hard time putting that safe harbor part in there, but we're excited to have you guys join us today here at the show. Thank you, Kitty. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, Kitty. So, I, I mean, so Newport was kind of a kind of a late start, right? I mean, you guys had a, a late spring and then with the COVID uncertainties, uh, your governor kept the state closed down for quite a bit longer than you had anticipated. How did that impact you guys? Yeah, we felt about a six week delay in, in pretty much the way the season would normally start. Um, but by mid July, we were pretty well fully cranked up and, and had more you know, boats over 60 meters than we've ever had before. Uh, so it turned out okay in the end, uh, but it was definitely a late start for us. And how did, it, uh, did you see from the charter perspective? Were vessels able to charter very easily in and out of Newport? Yes, we heard from quite a few brokers that the charter business was excellent this summer. And unfortunately, we did have to postpone the Newport Charter Yacht Show this year, but we're already looking forward to next year. We have dates on the calendar for June 21st, to the 24th. So we're going to plan ahead and hope that, um, that we can have another great show next summer. Oh, I look forward to it. That would be so great. And uh, I know that Maine and some of the other New England states had a little bit of a different experience because they they were really shut down in the 
J.B. Turner from Front Street Shipyard had said to me earlier uh, this summer that he was like seeing 300 footers in every bay in Maine. So um, has that, that's been good for you guys as well because the vessel stayed longer up there in New England this year? Yeah, the, the, a lot of the larger boats stayed a bit longer um, and there was, there was, I think over 20 boats that are over 250 feet. Um, so oh, wow, that's fantastic. So, wow. Uh, so we know that as soon as they leave you guys, they're going to head to our next guest. And I'm excited to introduce Dan Cowens, the founder of Oasis Marinas. And nobody knows the Chesapeake like Dan. So, uh, so how has the Chesapeake fared through all of this? Well, you're too kind. I'm sure there are plenty of people that know it better than me, but I'm happy to call it home. Uh, and since June, when we reopened up for, for boating, it's gone really well. We've seen more 40 through... Look, we didn't see a hundred meter. We had a hundred meter on the books, but it changed last minute. But we've had many 40 through 70 meters uh, come in, uh, more than we've ever seen. And uh, we we're very fortunate that uh, we got a lot of positive feedback from captains that had never come to the Chesapeake. Uh, they'd certainly never made their way to Baltimore. And uh, even on social media, we were really excited to read some impromptu comments from boat captains that said, I would have never thought about going to Baltimore. Uh, but we had such an amazing experience, we will be back. Uh, and similar to what uh, others are saying, the average stay for us uh, was significantly longer. So for us, typically the super and megas that come in are in for a couple of days, uh, depending on ownership. Uh, but this time the average length of stay was a little over four weeks. Uh, so it was much longer. Uh, we also saw some uh, big charter boats coming in uh, for charter. Uh, that worked out really well because uh, the one thing that I feel like our state actually got right was from a quarantine standpoint. So they weren't uh, having uh, the crew quarantine every time. So the, the crews appreciated that. In addition, um, many marinas around the Chesapeake Bay have been retrofitting uh, and getting spun up with uh, super power out on the docks, uh, as well as many more large floating docks uh, preparing for this. Uh, so we were excited to be able to show off a little bit. Uh, what many marinas around the bay have been preparing for and kind of building what I call the field of dreams, which is, you know, building these, uh, these marinas that can accept these super mega and giga yachts. Uh, and they're here. So it was uh, a great experience for us, phenomenal experience for um, our team members and staff members, not only at our marinas, but also at the other marinas uh, up and down the Chesapeake. And I won't leave out the Potomac. Uh, we had more uh, uh, large vessels going up the Potomac and spending time uh, at our locations up around DC, uh, probably doing some legislation maybe. Uh, but uh, That's more good. Those, We're talking yeah, about than, that today too. So Yeah, than uh, I've ever seen. So it was great. I'm glad to hear it. And I did hear that there was uh, some of the vessels that left the Caribbean over the summer spent some time in the, in the, in the Chesapeake this summer. Uh, last summer so because they the Caribbean was on off open closed like so many so many of our places around the world have had to deal with these these COVID struggles so I'm, I'm happy that you guys were a good recipient of that as well so thanks so much Dan for joining us and uh, and uh, next we go back to our largest region in the US and uh, definitely one of the biggest shipyards and one of the oldest shipyards in Fort Lauderdale I am very pleased to have Michael Kelly with Bradford Marine. And you guys had some great news this year. You acquired the property right next door. And I, I can see lots of boats in your yard. So tell me, Michael, how's things going there? Everything's going well, Kitty. Thanks for having me. And yes, we closed on our acquisition of Billfish Marina, along with Pipe Builders, High Seas Technology, and PNR Canvas on May 1st. Um, a number of the vessels that historically would have gone up to the northeast at the beginning of the summer, um, stayed here a little bit long later, went up after that, um, and a lot of refit activity throughout the summer, getting ready for the winter cruising season. Um, so yeah, between the two properties, there's a lot of activity um, here at Bradford and throughout Fort Lauderdale. So would you say that business has been improved since COVID or has it been about the Yes, business initially, a lot of the vessels just wanted to stay put, kind of stay with dockage down here. Um, and then as things kind of unfolded, they went into a lot of service work and have really been focused on a lot of the, um, the refits going throughout the year. 
Oh, that's great. And you also have a shipyard in Freeport as well, correct? Yes. Yep. We have 47 acres in Freeport, Grand Bahama with a 1200 ton dry dock there in Freeport. Um, and the Bahamas has been a little bit more um, locked down initially, but yes. things are a lot, a lot better now. Um, and there's been a lot of activity, whether it's the um, large yachts coming in, commercial vessels, et cetera. So there's a lot of activity over there now as well. Well, that's, that's great. And I'm, I'm happy to see that things are going so well. And I know you guys are just part of the, the big family of the boating industry here in South Florida. Um, and it was a perfect segue to our final guest. And I'm very excited to have Joe Dargavage with the Association of Bahamas Marinas, the vice president, but also a, 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 a boater and an industry person of many years. Joe, tell us what's happening in the Bahamas. Our partner, everybody goes cruising. Well, first of all, Kitty, thank you so much for, uh, you and the entire uh, U.S. Super Yacht Association team that puts on such a great event uh, at the boat show every, every it's usually on Friday like it is today. So, uh, so thank you for having me to represent the Bahamas. Yes, um, I am uh, extremely excited to talk about, uh, as Kitty said, we've had a lot of ups and downs since March. And everybody in uh, the South Florida yachting community uh, knows this, uh, and what we've been going through in the Bahamas. And the main reason is, is, is our healthcare infrastructure isn't like that of our neighbors uh, j just to the West in the US. So we do not have many hospital beds and we do not have uh, a, a large uh, hospital uh, infrastructure outside of not Nassau. And so that includes a lot of the cruising grounds where the yachts go, Exumas, Harbor Island and such. Uh, so we are definitely getting ready to, uh, to hopefully transition back to welcoming boats uh, we had so many yachts uh, over the last six months reaching out to us. We know all the yards are full, all the marinas are full in South Florida, with a large percentage of those boats heading to the Bahamas. And that's why our relationship with the USSA has always been so important. We do consider ourselves just a, an offshoot to the United States, and quite technically, we're the cruising ground for those yachts. And uh, so there's pretty much uh, no big yachts that come to Fort Lauderdale that don't also come to the Bahamas. And same with the reversal. Uh, every boat that comes from the Med and comes to the Bahamas first are on their way to the United States or, or, uh, or vice versa. So uh, starting November 1st or this Sunday, the biggest announcement we can make is there will no longer be quarantine. That is huge because that has been in effect and that has truly affected the boats coming over. They went from at least having a few boats coming to none. So as of the first, you'll still need your, your PCR COVID test and uh, you'll have that while you're still in, in the United States five days prior to coming. But once you get there, we'll be switching to a rapid antigen, uh, antigen test and you'll get it on day one. And if you happen to stay more than five days, you'll get it on day five. Uh, but once you get it on day one at your, at your initial uh, reporting in facility or marina, uh, you can then move about the Bahamas. You don't have to stay in that location for five days. So if you happen to go down to the Exumas and you're all out on anchor for two, three weeks, that's okay. You don't even have to take that second test until you come back to shore. So you'll be hearing a lot more about that in the coming days. Uh, that should really change everything. We're really hoping to bounce back for 2021. I am here to announce two great things that are going to be great for the South Florida market is as of this week, uh, the Association Bahamas Marinas was able to announce their brand new United States office uh, that has opened in the Rybovich uh, Boatyard and Marina in West Palm Beach. So we're really excited about that. So any USA, USA, USSA members who happen to be in West Palm or any of uh, our client captains that happen to be in that area, we'd love to see them in our new office. Secondly, which I'm able to announce today, uh, we will be initiating um, the, the, the first uh, Bahamas Marina and Charter Show in Nassau at the end of February, early March, the last three days of February, first week of March. Uh, we are proud to announce that our, that our relationship uh, with, with the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, as well as a partnership with the IYBA, will be moving forward with what shall be to come, what we think will be one of the bigger charter shows uh, in this region within the next two to three years. So we're oh, real well, excited about that. We're That's real excited exciting. about everything we do with all of our, our boats that uh, come from the United States and all the companies that we work with and many of them that are on here today uh, with Bradford and Dan and everybody else. And so. Uh, the Bahamas will bounce back. It'll, it'll bounce back very quickly. And uh, so we're excited to have everybody. 
Well, we've seen how the, the endurance of the Bahamian people after the hurricanes and everything from last year. And I have no doubt that they'll come back even stronger than ever and as have so many places. And we really respect that you guys have, uh, have come and joined us all today. I can't thank you guys enough. We had so much more to talk about, but I know unfortunately we have lots to cover today at the meeting and I wish you would all be here, but I look forward to next year having, having us all in person, at least at a meeting sometime soon. So thank you guys all so much for joining us. And I got to get back to the show. But in the meantime, for anybody that's on, the sh on this call, um, I'm going to put the links for everybody's different sites that are there. So we'll have Super Yacht Northwest, we'll have the Bahamas, uh, Safe Harbor, Newport, as well as the South, uh, the Marina Group Boat Works, and of course, Snag and Slip and, and Oasis Marinas. So I'm going to go back to the stage and get on with the show. But thanks so much, guys, and stay safe and stay well. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, Kitty. Thank you, everybody. And we're out. Boats moving in different directions, trying to get out of that normal pattern. And I, I do believe that this COVID disruption has changed a lot of the past. People are looking to get off the beaten path and they're looking to try and go someplace new. So uh, I know that uh, we have a Marina Coast Peru here and, I, and that... Uh, so we're going to be updating our website to let everybody know so that you can tell your customers when it's safe and when things are open, because it's a never changing environment. So a few years ago, we, uh, we, as we saw this trend happening, we created a Pacific partnership. And through this alliance, we're able to provide our members with on the ground opportunities to make sure that their customers, their boats, their captains, and everybody had a great experience. And one of the Super Yacht World's most engaging events, the America's Cup, is going to be held in New Zealand this year, where our U.S. team is fighting for the opportunity to get back the cup. So please join me in welcoming a couple members from our team from the South Pacific with a couple of updates as to what's happening down under, led by my friend and colleague from Super Yacht Australia, David Good, and Peter Busfield, Executive Director of the Marine Trades Association of New Zealand. Take it away, David. G'day, thanks Kitty. Um, what a remarkable thing to actually hold an event in person for uh, your members, so well done on today. Um, great to come to you from Sydney. Uh, it's a shame that we can't be there in person, but I'm sure we'll make up for it next year. Uh, I'm a little bit jealous that it's a luncheon uh, activity this year because I'm sure there's gonna be something stronger on the tables than the coffee that's normally there. So. That's my type of event. Um, once again, I'm sure we can make up for that again next year. Um, here in Australia, uh, we've been relatively protected from the effects of COVID-19. Um, we've had one state that's, uh, that's had it pretty bad, which is the state of Victoria. Um, but they've just come out of their uh, second wave lockdown uh, as of uh, last night. So I'm sure there's, uh, there's big parties happening there today because people are allowed to go to the pub again. Uh, We've been able to keep our borders open here in Australia for super yachts. Uh, originally, with uh, some issues that went on with uh, cruise ships, um, and particularly the Ruby Princess that docked just over my shoulder here in uh, Circular Quay, um, there was a lot of cases of COVID that came from that. And uh, as a result, we uh, had all foreign flagged vessels were uh, directed out of Australian waters. Um, that was originally going to affect super yachts, but we managed to uh, lobby government and have that change so that we've had uh, continued uh, success of having super yachts come in here. Majority of them uh, made use of our refit and maintenance facilities here. Um, they've brought forward their maintenance so that they're ready to go once uh, travel opens up for their boss. So, and uh, recently we've had uh, two owners have been approved to enter Australia so they can enjoy some cruising in our waterways. Uh, we had our Special Recreational Vessel Act, which is our charter rules for Australia, to allow foreign flagged vessels to charter freely here without being imported. That came into effect in December last year. And, uh, and fortunately, there's a 85 metre on her second charter with an Australian family that wouldn't have been able to, to be held without those rules coming into place. They're, as we speak, enjoying the Great Barrier Reef. Um, so 
you know, it's been uh, it's been a good year apart from the effects of COVID and not being able to catch up with everyone at uh, various boat shows such as Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to have Fiji running a system that allows owners and guests to still come in. They call it the VIP Blue Lane. Uh, it's a process where uh, guests will fly in privately. They will transfer directly to the vessel and the Fijian Navy puts that vessel under surveillance so they don't have to go to a hotel and do quarantine. They can pretty much do their cruise as they would normally do um, as long as they, um, they stay on the vessel or immediately around the vessel. So they can't go ashore and have, um, have a party with guests at a hotel until after they've done 14 days um, under surveillance. So that's been uh, one way for us to uh, keep the vessels occupied within the South Pacific and let owners and guests enjoy some of the beautiful waters here. Peter across in New Zealand, can you give us an update, most importantly, on what's happening with the America's Cup that I believe is, uh, is still underway and they're training hard as we speak. Over to you. Greetings from New Zealand. I'm Peter Busfield from the Marine Industry Association of New Zealand. I have fond memories of being at your AGM this time last year. And I wish the USA Super Yacht Association all the very best for today's annual general meeting. New Zealand is COVID free. We have no COVID cases in the community and there is no one with COVID in our hospitals. So we're very appreciative of this situation and New Zealanders can basically have normal freedoms uh, as per normal. We had an election last week and the current government was re-elected. Jacinda Ardern is our Prime Minister, and we hope that she continues to do a good job in keeping New Zealand COVID free. One exemption we have been able to get through the borders is visiting yachts and super yachts that have a booked in repair or refit. And to date, we've got 20 of these vessels that have had these approval and arrived in New Zealand for refit and repair. The only requirement is that the exemption is for the delivery crew, the normal crew on those yachts. And unfortunately, at this stage, it does not allow the owner or friends or guests to, jo to join that super yacht whilst it is in New Zealand. We are, however, working with the New Zealand government, trying to get this exemption put through to allow super yacht owners to join their vessels in New Zealand. We're pleased to advise that the America's Cup is all go. And right here in Auckland, we now have, practicing on the harbour, the New York Yacht Club entry, American Magic, Enios from the United Kingdom, Luna Rossa from Italy, and of course, our own Emirates Team New Zealand, defending the America's Cup. These yachts, capable of 50 knots, are now racing around practicing on Auckland's Harbour, and it's a delight to see. The government and the local council have built a new America's Cup Harbour, so this is ringed with restaurants and public areas for great viewing. The first major regatta 
involving all these vessels is the World Cup Series of December the 17th, 2020. At this regatta, all of the syndicates and Emirates to New Zealand will be racing against each other. Then in January and February 2021, the Parada Challenger Series takes place. This used to be named the Louis Vuitton, where the best challenger will be selected to then race against Emirates Team New Zealand in the America's Cup match starting March the 6th, 2021. During the period of February, we're looking forward, our own organisation, to hosting the New Zealand Millennium Cup. This is a well-recognised superyacht regatta held in the lovely Bay of Islands, which is 120 nautical miles north of Auckland, set in a beautiful scenery of uninhabited beaches, islands, great sailing, fishing, and just great lifestyle in the summer of the Bay of Islands. We have six entries to date and looking for more entries uh, signing up shortly uh, in that super yacht regatta. The Millennium Cup started in year 2000 when we first defended the America's Cup and it's been a legacy ever since. We're very hopeful of having a bubble opening up with Australia and maybe other Pacific Island nations to allow more entries uh, in that regatta in February 2021. To give you a little bit of a taste of what these America's Cup boats look like, we now can show you a video of Emirates Team New Zealand practicing on the Auckland Harbour. As I said, these are 75 foot yachts, mono hulls that are capable of doing 50 knots. We do look forward to when our borders are open and we can invite you all to come and visit New Zealand. All the best in the meantime and have a great annual general meeting. Thanks, Peter. Um, it's certainly the the activity that's on everyone's mind at the moment. It's the, the biggest thing to happen in the yachting world um, for the next couple of years. So we're all super keen to see that it actually goes ahead and that you guys retain it so we can see it in Auckland again four years later. Thanks, Kitty. Uh, thank you, everybody, for indulging us. Um, although we can't be there in person, um, it's still great that we can give you an update of what's happening on our side of the world and next year. Wow, it's like amazing. Those boats are absolutely incredible. Thank, I really appreciate our partners giving their insights. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to keep our website updated as to when things are opening and how things are progressing. And one of our group partner members, the AYSS, is an organization that's designed to help make that transition even more easy and, and better for the yachts and the captains. And they can make any yacht dream a reality they are on our website but here they are right here 
So we're coming quickly to the end of the program and we're gonna like move things quickly because I appreciate you all taking the time to sit and keep listening. And I'm sure that many people need that, uh, that little quick potty break. But uh, last but certainly not least, we added one last award to today's event to celebrate the leadership and accomplishments of our up and coming. The yachting industry, because God knows I've been in this business for over 30 years and us gray hairs aren't gonna be around forever. But the young professionals in yachting has done a great job of educating, united, uniting, and bringing up that next generation. So our board thought it would be important to recognize this, not only this group, but the best and brightest of them amongst them. The inaugural winner of this first YPY Leadership Award is the COO of a growing small business run by three members of the Young Professionals in Yachting. In addition to her efforts as a, as a, that's in addition to her efforts as a current board chair of YPY. And as that chair, Katie Hagen has moderated the first ocean conservation panel for the organization, the forthcoming Coral Restoration Dive Project. She's opened up business for the South Broward High School Marine Maritime Magnet Program and will be featured this season on season four of MIASF Salty Jobs. But true to her nature, Katie's ability to give and contribute to the benefit of the greater good is even more prevalent in her community work. Clearly, the super yacht industry is in incredible hands with young professionals like Katie stepping up to not only be better, place in the process. So I think Katie was here. So let's, let's thank Katie. Thank you, Katie and the YPY for all that you've done to help groom our next round of leaders. and all of the members and board members of USSA and uh, the board of YPY for this uh, incredible award. I'm, I'm so extremely honored to receive this. And uh, it's been a crazy year of riding the waves. So full steam ahead and stay strong and stay motivated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie. And all of the things that YPY are doing for the industry. Another great addition that we had this year in partnership with YPY was to create a mentorship program to help further encourage the development of our industry's youth. And to date, we've matched, I think, four or five uh, young professionals with our USSA members. So stay tuned for more on that one. So, wow, it's been an incredible day of an unprecedented event, the craziest year, technical difficulties that we expected, did not expect, um, but it's been my honor to serve this organization uh, for 10 years and to work with real professionals in our industry. Please know that despite everything that here at the USSA, we are always here to help you make the most ROI from your membership. And I know that all of us long for the good old days where we can hang out at the bar and socially uh, non-socially distant, distance, no elbow bumps, but hugs and, and interaction. But I challenge everybody here to rise above, look for new ways to drive our industry forward in this new world. I know that we're individually strong, but together a powerful force. So on behalf of our board of directors, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. I'd like to especially thank our sponsors, who came out to support us during this challenging time to allow us to bring this program to all of you. I'd also like to thank the wonderful team here at BHMR because they hadn't had any events and everybody was laid off and Trish Miracola and all the team here and all the guys have done an amazing job under these stringent COVID uh, restrictions. Of course, our Final thank you to our multi-talented Lee Savage between two Yetis who took on this hybrid challenge and did it very well. 
Seth and, and the group from JV Connectivity, uh, who uh, kept us online most of the time. Um, Tom Serio, our trusty cameraman, and all and mostly all of you who've come out here today and all of you who have joined us online to celebrate the U.S. Super Yacht Association and our industry together. We are a team. We are. And just like Dorothy and her motley crew who went off to see the wizard in search of Emerald City, together we have the heart, the brain, and the courage to travel down that yellow brick road together to support our members, the super yacht industries all over the world. If you're not currently a member, I urge you to join our efforts and uh, you can go to ussuperyacht.com or if you haven't renewed yet, we'd certainly appreciate it because it will help us continue our efforts. But thank you all so very much for being a part of this historic meeting. And I don't know about you, but I look forward to us all being together in person next year. Until then, stay safe, stay well. May we all stay strong together because through strife comes strength and ingenuity. I'm confident that the best is yet to come. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the show, and I hope that you all stay well. Thank you so much for joining us and everybody online. Thank you so much for enduring our difficulties. We love you guys. And don't forget to vote next Tuesday if you haven't already.